just a little bit about us. We are mother and daughter. She's the mom, I'm the daughter. <laughs> I'm glad you pointed that one out. We have traveled the world. Um, we've been fortunate enough. So we decided this year to do our traveling with a purpose. We're doing this for the stories. We want to get the women's stories. We want to find out who they are and how they came to run for political offices. And the other piece of this is really getting out the vote. So stay tuned and, and please come along with come us along on our adventure. Us. We'd love to have you. Okay, so we are um, off on um, our Women 2018 adventure. Departing Los Angeles for Cincinnati via Minneapolis. But we are going to Kentucky. We are going to be interviewing three candidates. So stay tuned, you guys. This is going to be fun. Hi, everybody. I'm Tracy Patton. And I'm Kathy Warren. And this is Women 2018. And yes, our adventure continues. It goes on and on as we travel across the country to meet and interview the many women running for political office this year. And the majority of the women are running for the first time. And here we are in Lexington, Kentucky. And we are in District 6, where Amy McGrath is running for Congress. So, yeah. Amy, come on. Come on, Amy. Amy just happens to be here. Yes, Amy, so just great great to have you here. Great. Great, great, great to, to meet be here. you. Tell us about when you were a young girl and when you wanted to be a fighter pilot. Well, um, you know, I was about uh, 11, 12 years old, and I saw a History Channel documentary which had a bunch of aircraft flying onto the back of aircraft carriers. And I just looked at that and I said, that is cool. Uh, I want to do that. What that, that dream that I had at the age of 11 and 12, I learned very quickly that, that those positions were closed to women. Yes. Yeah, there was a federal yeah. law. And so that's how I, I started really understanding government um, at that young age. I was a United States Marine for 20 years. What do you think the impact is going to be with all the women running and, and winning? winning? I want to inspire others. Um, it's, it's sometimes hard to be the, you know, one of the first, of course, uh, but there have been women that have done it before us. Yeah. We can do it. We need it. Yeah. And we need women to step up. We're heading back and we're going to head out again to other states and other candidates and other spontaneous experiences. We expect a completely full flight. Every okay. seat will be taken. Okay, so we are, are on a flight, flight as you can tell. We're heading to Austin. We're going to be interviewing three candidates in Texas. So stay tuned. We're excited. We are, as you can see, outside the Heritage Pond in District 23 in San Antonio, Texas, where Gina Ortiz Jones is running for Congress. Gina, come on in yeah, here. Come on in. We're gonna take right. you guys. We're gonna we're doing a little something a little we're different. Take a walk. And we're yeah. gonna take a slow walk. Hopefully, we don't trip you guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll try not to. What's the impact that your mom has had on your life? You know, I always tell folks my story starts 40 years ago. 40 years ago, my mother came to this country. She bet on herself, came to this country again, knowing the sky is the limit if you're willing to work yeah, hard. Right. And so her example has just been, look, you know, prepare yourself, work hard, um, and give back. It's the duck pond. Everybody knows, kind of, when you say duck pond, everybody knows exactly, you know, which where you're at, what the, okay. and, and the significance of this. And then you joined the Air Force as an intelligence officer. What yes. was that like? Well, you know, well, I was I was honored. Uh, you know, when you talk about not just national security, it's not just, you know, Iraq, Afghanistan, China, Russia, but the right. pipeline of talent. Of course, I also talk about the fact that I served under Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And, and we need everybody to feel like they can contribute, uh, uh, you know, to, to our country. And I would hope that for young girls, uh, you know, seeking uh, to lead in the future, that, that my campaign and the campaign of so many others across the country are an inspiration, and it shows them that they can do it if they want to do it. We are here. <laughs> in District 7, which means Houston, which means Lizzie Fletcher, who is running for Congress. So good Thanks, to guys. have you here. Oh, it's so exciting uh, to be here. Thank you for having me. You talk a lot about being um, just, uh, just passionate about Houston. I am a, a lifelong Houstonian, and I am Houston proud, which was a big slogan for the city back in the 80s. Oh, yes. um, but Houston is an incredible city. We need a lot more Houston in Washington, D.C. Oh, this city yeah. has grown since I was a kid, and my mom grew up here, and her dad grew up here. You, you've been a, a bit involved in the creative arts, in addition to being an attorney, which there is certain creativity in there that, There is right? creativity <laughs> yes. in that, too. Oh, but um, You guys all want to be actors, <laughs> it seems. 
And I think what we're seeing with a lot of women this election cycle is that we're finding our voices. Yes. Sorry, Mom, to have you out of this. No, that's fine. We have a, we're going to be very casual here. We have, this is my new gadget, and I and I love it because it's very awesome. up close and personal. We get to be oh, cozy. Fun. Describe the moment or moments that you just des decided to run. But after the 2016 election results, I started oh. thinking about what I could do uh -huh. um, more. I kept having this conversation um, a lot about kind of where are the grown-ups. Now, where are the people yes. that are supposed to be looking out for us and mm -hmm. making the best decisions for everyone? And I think that a lot of these women who are running, a lot of us first-time candidates, and a lot of women who've been fighting and running for years are just showing everyone how it's done. And I think that we're gonna we're gonna sweep into Washington and state houses across the country. And I think we're gonna get to work and we're gonna get things done. We are on our way back home. Where are we right now, Mom? We're at the Houston Hobby Airport. Houston Airport, mm -hmm. and what? A week it's been. And we flew from LA to Austin, then we drove to San Antonio. We flew yesterday, <laughs> can't believe it, to Houston. Houston. And now we are up to number 10, right? right. Uh -huh. We have done 10 inter ten interviews. Ten. Yeah. Once these women are in Washington, D.C., watch yes. out. Yes, we're on the road again. We just got back from Texas like yesterday. Where are we going, Mom? We're going to Detroit. Detroit. We are in Lansing, Michigan to talk to Gretchen Whitmer, who is running for governor. So Gretchen, come join come us. Right. Come on. <laughs> Sit right in the middle. It's Thank so you. nice to have yeah. you here and to be here in, in Lansing. And I'm speak. glad you're here, yes. and I'm glad we all coordinated our outfits. We coordinated well, without even meeting this. I love that. You stocked shelves at Target, right? And mm -hmm. you worked for a lumber company, and I wish we had more time. We could ask you all about that, <laughs> all about lumber. And then you were in the buffet line. You worked in the buffet line at the Royal Fork, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. how did you end up in politics? I mm -hmm. thought I was going to be a sports broadcaster. There oh, were really? Oh, no okay. women on ESPN. Oh, and Gretchen. Because most, as, as our viewers know, most of the people, um, the candidates we've interviewed are running for the very first time. What insights do you have for them? I think it's just do it. So we have to yeah. plant the seed uh -huh. and encourage what? one another. When more women run, what? more yeah. women will win. win. Today we are in District 11 in Michigan where Feruz Saad is running for Congress and Feruz, right. come, come to join us. It's so great to be here and to meet it's you. It's so nice to meet you. Let's talk about your parents who came here 40 years ago. It's a very typical immigrant story. Okay. You are a marathon runner. Yeah, yeah. What do you love about running? Uh, the discipline involved. It's a, a way to constantly challenge yourself. What do you think the impact is going to be with women like you? So many women running and, and winning. winning. Uh, yes. Right. We're changing the face and the definition of leadership and power in this country. We are in Michigan in District 8. And guess what, you guys? We are on a farm, a family farm. <laughs> Alyssa Slotkin is running for Congress. Come join us. Yep. Hi, Alyssa. Howdy, howdy. Thanks for having me. So when you were in graduate school mm -hmm. in New York City, yeah. that's when 9-11 happened. Yeah, so my second day. Oh, how did that yeah. impact the course of your life? It pretty much changed it. Yeah. Um, I was always interested in international affairs, um, but when the smoke cleared on 9-11 after that day, I really knew national service was what I was going to oh, do. Right. And within a year of that, I was recruited by the CIA to be a Middle East analyst. Bonjour. And you met your husband in Iraq, right? I did. On my third tour, I met my husband, Dave. He's a career army officer. Oh, and we really? met um, for the first time in Iraq, right outside Saddam's palace. But the moment that I really decided, okay, I'm in it, um, is, was about a year ago, almost exactly a year ago. For me, certainly because of my mom, healthcare is extremely personal. When she was originally diagnosed, she did not have health insurance. We are uh, headed back to LA and at the airport once again. We are leaving Michigan after an incredible adventure here. Four interviews in 24 hours, 28 hours to yeah. be exact. So every time we do this, we learn new things. Yeah. We learn, we meet new, new candidates with new stories. Yeah. Here's to our next trip, which we don't know where that will be. And now we're in Tustin, California, that's Southern California, in District 45, where Katie Porter is running for Congress. And hey. here she is. Come, Come on join in. us. Hi, thank you guys Come so join much. Our coffee class. I'm so yeah. excited to be yeah. here with both of you. So great to have you here. Well, I want to ask you 
first about being a longtime Cub Master. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I got involved in Cub Scouts the same way that I think everybody else did, which is that I had boys. It's turned out to be one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. My daughter, daughter Betsy, became yes. one of the first I, girls. I, I the first Cub girls Scout. did you I guys so get excited about that? Her daughter became one of the first girls to be a Cub Scout. Yep. Yes. If this isn't enough, Cub Master, attorney, saving the consumers, um, you are now running for Congress. So how do you think women differ in conflict resolution? I think women have a lot of focus on um, where they want to go mm -hmm. and less at stake in kind of how they get there. And I bet being a Cub Master has helped you with conflict resolution. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> there is, we do a lot of conflict training and a lot of guys have a lot of leadership skills. We are here in California in District 25, which is just north of Los Angeles, where Katie Hill is running for Congress. Katie, come on down, come on join us. Join come us. in the middle. Thank you. Nice to have Hi. you here. Hi, what is it like to um, to have a farm? Well, it's uh, it can be a lot of work, but it's very it's a lot of fun. My husband, fortunately, is able to take care of it while I'm doing this. Running oh, for that's office. good. Okay. Um, and you have two kids. Right? And you have no, two I don't, kids. No, I don't have kids. No. No. Well, but kids, oh, goats. goats. Yes. You're trying to go. <laughs> ha, 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 okay. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm like, oh, I, I consider my animals my kids. Talk about your career and how you got started working with the homeless sure. and the PATH program. Yeah. So I was planning on becoming a nurse, like my mom and both of my grandmothers, uh, but I worked in the emergency room for about a year and a half, two years, and I quickly realized that it was it was the social issues that landed people in the emergency room. Describe the moment you decided to run. What yeah. was that like? I had several different people suggest that I consider running, and I remember the moment when I was, I, you know, at first I blew it off, and, and then I started thinking about it, and it was in the shower. Do you see any... I mean, obviously there are challenges, and being a woman running for the first time, it's much harder for women to fundraise off the bat. And I think oh, a, a fair amount of it is, you know, social socialization that we don't want to uh, ask people for things. Do you see a, an impact? Obviously, there will be an impact, and is there going to be a significant change with all these women running yeah. this year? I think the change is huge. So getting to the point where women are truly equally represented is the best way that we're going to be able to get equality. But also, I think, frankly, we have a different approach to solving problems. I guess. You guessed it, we are on another flight. We're on we our way to Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale to interview three more candidates in the Fort Lauderdale, Fort Myers area. So today we are in Jupiter, Florida in District 18 where Lauren Bayer is running for Congress. Hey Lauren, come to us. Yeah. So good to see you. Yeah, we're gonna hug. We like to hug, right? Yeah, right. We don't do the handshakes. We like to hug. The story about your mom. So share, share with everyone that just that amazing story and the impact your mom has had on your life. Yeah, so my mom is just the most incredible woman. Back when I uh, was in the uh, the seventh grade, just shy of my 12th birthday, uh, we got in a pretty bad car accident. My sister and I, we walked away from that accident just fine and my mom didn't. And oh, she yeah. has suffered in, in the past decades, yeah. dozens of surgeries, dozens yeah. of hospitalization. Oh, so Sky high medical bills. What do you think the impact is going to be and is with all the women running for Congress and political office? We are seeing mm -hmm. so many women for the first time getting in the arena, saying, I can't sit this one out. I, I can't sit on the sidelines. It doesn't matter what the barriers are. I'm going to do that. And I'm excited about that. Keep following us because we're gonna continue on this adventure interviewing many more women and seeing many more women win winning in their primaries yes. and on November 6th. We are so excited because now many women have won their primaries in the last few months and mom, we've interviewed several Some women who um, have won. Who have so won their primaries. Congrats to all the women, yay, and the, and women. the women. who are about to win. Yes, right. today, we are in District 17 in Lee County, Florida to talk to April Freeman, who is running for Congress. April, come join hey, us. Hey, April. Hi. Hi. So, so nice to be here. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I am particularly fascinated with your producing okay. and writing, being that I do a little bit of that myself. Okay. Um, so just tell us how, did, how you got into that. I started out with like brand marketing. 
and um, then it got into writing and producing and working on future films and then I decided I wanted to make a difference doing this <laughs> and so took the past couple years off. How do you see women handling conflict in Congress? You know that's a great question. I went to the Women's Campaign School at Yale which is a bipartisan group. It's all women mm -hmm. and they pretty much lock you in a room together and they work it out. When you put two women or four women or eight women in a room together, they're going to come up with a solution. Yeah, we are here in District 20 in Miramar, Florida, where Sheila Sherfulis, I practice that a lot, yeah. McCormick is running for Congress. So Sheila, come join us. Come and join us. Hello. Good to have you here. Sheila, what just in addition to just describing the moment that you decided to run, what does it feel like? And they invite you in and they tell you about the culture in your life. And so it gives you a different perspective where you get to really feel community. It kind of opened my eyes to what our real responsibility is. Yeah. The real responsibility is not just to be in Congress voting and passing laws, but to always keep that connectivity. Yeah. You know that your mom has had a big impact on you. Yes. And Sheila's mom just happens she to just be happened here. To Marie, by, come right? join us. Just, just squeeze in here. We'll do a little yeah. huddle. Yeah. Right. And we so great to mind. meet you. You must be a very proud mom. Yes, yes I am. One last thing. Yes, last Remember, thing. you ready? Don't vent, vote. Don't vent, vote. Vote, 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 vote. vote. Every vote counts.